Hey, it's Ben Housel here, and here in this tutorial, we're going to be having a look at the Digital Product 669's Ultimate Transitions Pack. Now, we're going to be looking at a few of the different transitions you can use in here, but they have transitions in here from comic book transitions to glitch transitions, some kind of classic movement uh, transitions as well, as well as some uh, kind of nice paintbrush transitions and a whole bunch of other uh, different kind of customizable transitions that you can use. So we're going to dive in here and have a look at some of the transitions in the Digital Product 669's Ultimate Transitions Pack. Um, that will give you a little flavor of how they work. We'll have a look at some of the simple transitions to add and also some of the more complex transitions where you've got a lot of control over the color. If you need to brand color, adding logos and that type of thing. So let's dive right in. So we're going to jump into the Final Cut Pro 10 timeline and we've just kind of laid out a few clips here to add some transitions to. And the first First thing we'll do here is just zoom in on our timeline a little bit. So you can see here um, we've got some surfing footage from a recent trip to Mexico. So once you've run through the instructions for installing the transitions pack, you will find it in your transitions um, across to the right and we will jump down into the ultimate transitions pack. And you can see the way the pack is set up, it's kind of split into different styles of transitions. So we have some of the brush transitions at the top here. We have some of the camera transitions, comic book transitions, and there really are a lot of different styles of transitions. So if you're looking for a transitions pack that gives you a lot of different options for working with different styles of transitions, rather than knowing that you wanna stick to one particular style of transition, then this is a really good and affordable one to, to kind of begin with. So basically, we're gonna jump in and have a look at a couple of my favorites that I picked out. So I really like some of the, the brush transitions, um, and we are gonna just kind of look for a clip here that I colorized just so we can kind of see how the brush works. So we're going from a regular clip of this guy on the beach to this clip of the surfer, and we're gonna try out a couple of these uh, brush transitions here. So we'll grab this brush number five and we'll drag it onto our edit point. And it looks really nice here with the color on that second clip. So definitely a lot of very kind of cool brushes to, to play around with here. And obviously to speed up and slow down the transitions, we can just lengthen them or shorten them on the timeline and they will kind of adjust accordingly. Now with the brush transitions, we've got some kind of basic options to reverse it, to flip it horizontally or to flip it vertically. And with some of the other transitions that we'll see like the comic book ones, we've got a lot of different levels of control in there. So here we've just got some simple options for the direction of that particular transition. So let's scroll down here and have a look at a couple of the other ones. These kind of classic movement transitions are always really handy to have. Um, so we've got kind of a simple camera movement, uh, kind of gravity camera movement. I did like the rotate camera movement. We'll just drag that one on here and you can see really simple to apply and then we get that nice kind of smooth motion, that kind of whip pan motion uh, when we kind of apply it to the timeline. And again, with this clip, not really a lot of different control over it, kind of just drops onto the timeline really nice and simply. Now, once we get down to the, the comic book styles, we have some different options. So we'll just grab this comic book style four and we will drop it onto the timeline. So here you can see uh, we have our clip in the middle that kind of freeze frames. So basically we're transitioning from our hut on the left and that pops in on the right there. Uh, and then we have the next clip in the middle which is gonna be transition two. And then we also have on the top left here this option for um, a drop zone. So if we come to our drop zone here, we're gonna drop in this clip here. So I'm just gonna click on this clip on the timeline, do shift and F which is gonna bring it up in my library up here on the top left. And once we've done that, we'll come back to our edit. And now we can come to our image source or our drop zone here. And we can select the start of that image source. So I'm just going to click on this clip up at the top left and we'll apply that clip. And you can see now that when we kind of play that through, um, it's like a little offset. We're not really seeing that clip on the top left but we do have a nice level of control over this kind of comic book pan and Digital Product 669 have a few different comic book plugins um, that are really kind of nice to, to work with. So we can pan that image into the right spot, change the scale of it so we get kind of more of a feeling of what's going on in that video and it kind of fits in nicely with the transition. And then obviously we have some text that we can change. 
we can modify the size of the text and then we have this to be continued that we can change again and we'll just edit that in there and we will jump down to the scale and then just increase the tracking a little bit until we've got that nicely in there so you can see some real nice kind of levels of control and I think that's one of the things I like about this transition pack is that we have those different styles um, and then some of the styles where we need it we have the the kind of control in there and then we also have control if we just leave the playhead here in the middle over the color tints at the top so we can get those color tints to kind of match the colors that we want so we can pick out colors that match our branding um, or we can pick out uh, kind of colors that match our video style in here as well so we get a nice level of control in this comic book style So you can see, super easy to edit, super nicely set up, um, and kind of really easy to use. So if we come to a next edit point here now, we're going to scroll down, have a look at some of the, the glitch transitions. The elegant themes are nice, um, but I am a big fan of these glitch transitions, and they seem super popular at the moment. So we're going to grab this fail render glitch transition, and we'll just drop it onto this edit point. So you can see we get this kind of nice transition there and actually we'll flip this round. I'm going to have this clip first. We'll have the transition there in the middle. So we'll come from the guy on the beach to the surfing. So if we bring our playhead ahead in time here and then pick out some colors from our next video for some of those parts of the glitch, then we'll get a little bit more kind of color matching and it can work quite nicely to have some of those wild colors, but then also a little bit of consistency between the transition and your next clip. So we'll just drop in some orange there and you can see now we've modified the color and we've also dropped in some color that kind of relates to the next clip and that's working quite nicely. All right, so lots of other kind of very cool transitions here. The fail render is nice, the pixels is nice and then we have things like signal interference and stuff as well. So a lot of Nice different transitions in that kind of glitch um, setup as well. The ink ones are nice as well. Uh, we can kind of drop these on and we have some ink transitions. Okay, and you can see again in here, uh, we have some colors that we can pick out. So we can pick colors. We could even kind of match the, the colors that are in these surfboards, maybe some of the greens and we will pick out maybe a different blue here. Okay, and so now you can see again, we have changed the kind of color scheme of that to match a little bit what we have in the background. We also have some different options for the ink position in here as well. So if you have particular bits of action uh, in one clip or the next, uh, then you can get that to match. So for instance, here we have this big ink blob. So we can see this is ink drop two up on the top left. So we can move the position of that so we can drop it away from that image so that we don't obscure that straight away in the transition. So we've got a nice level of control over the detail of where that transition begins, which I think is super cool. So we'll have a look at a couple more transitions here. We'll have a look at this leak 07 so these are our kind of list of light leak transitions so you can see we kind of get a nice sort of flash light leak there which is super cool and these light leak transitions can really lift the atmosphere of your your video so if we pause that and we scroll down here the last one we'll look at um, will be some of these logo transitions and these are super cool if you need to brand anything we can kind of match up the color so we'll come for this last transition here between this fancy surfboard bench uh, and this surfer. So there's two transitions in here that are nice. One is the, the shape wipe here. And if we drag this onto our clip, you can see we get a logo source here as well. We also get the number. So if you wanna do something like a countdown for your videos, then being able to put the numbers in here would always be really handy. We can also, let's just delete this transition. We'll come to shape wipe 12. If we 
set this up, this is what we have. If we want to place a logo in the middle here, we can use the, the drop zone to do this. So I already have a logo set up. So I'll just scroll all the way up to the top here. And we have this logo here, which looks completely black, but it's just got transparency on it, which is why it has the black there. So if we select our transition here, and I set the transparent logo up in Photoshop. So we'll click on our image well, our drop zone. We'll come to the logo here. And you can see that will drop in with the transparency and we can increase the scale of it. Okay, so we want it nice and big. Obviously it's super important. Uh, we can use a logo tint as well. So at the moment that is set to white, but we can change that. So let's set that to a yellow. And then we can also set the colors of that top and bottom area to some different colors as well. So we'll set that to orange and this kind of magenta. And so once those are set, we'll hit apply clip. And then you can see now when we play it through, we've kind of matched the colors that we want. And obviously you can match any kind of RGB values um, that you need as well. So this ultimate transitions pack from Digital Product 669 gives you a kind of real nice selection of different styles of transitions that you can use in your edits. So if you're really not sure or you've just started using Final Cut Pro 10, then this transitions pack will give you a nice range of different transitions to use. So you can see in here from things like the brush transitions through to the camera movements, which are super useful um, in certain instances, uh, to the really playful kind of comic book styles, and then things like the glitch style. And we have a lot of different uh, transitions that we can use to give a different look and feel to different parts of our edits and also to different edits. So if we want to kind of vary from edit to edit, or we're not sure we want to plant our flag in terms of which transitions to use uh, as a kind of style, then the Digital Product 669's Ultimate Transition Pack gives you a flavor of everything. So I definitely recommend this. There's a lot of control in there for the plugins where you need it uh, and less control where you don't need it for things like the movements and stuff like that. And I would definitely check this out. Follow the link below. And if you have any questions about this plugin or general questions about Final Cut Pro 10 or Apple Motion, then don't hesitate to leave a question in the comments below. And I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial or review.